Hi there. You're watching Shipping Off the Cuff on Tequila Fish and Auto Media. All of our networks. I'm Mike Morales. Uh, here in San Antonio, <laughs> that gentleman out there is laughing at me. <laughs> I remember where I am. I'm Matt Metric in Rochester, New York. <laughs> oh my gosh, uh, Matt and I have been have been having a great time um, uh, talking about and dissecting this new mezcal on the market, Cebusca. It's artisanal mezcal. It's coming in at 80 proof, 40 ABV. Uh, this is the Añejo version, and, and it's, the graphics are really sharp. Uh, the website's very slick. Uh, oh, yeah, nice. Yeah, we did get a little POS. Yeah, a little, yeah, but that's a neck tag, dude. That's not POS. Yeah. That's, that's a, well, it's, got the same, uh, it's got the same copy from their website on here on the yes, inside. Yes, yes. We, uh, we, we nominated it uh, for Brand of Promise in, in packaging, actually, mm -hmm. skull packaging. I love the look. Um, also for the Reposado and the Espadín, the Joven. Uh, even though this is coming in, now they're calling it Agave Augustafolia, but it is Agave Augustafolia Espadín. Um, they're going by, they're, they're trying to distinguish themselves again uh, by two different, actually three different ways. One by 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 what they're saying it's made from it is it is espadín. Uh, two by what they're saying the wood that they're using is mesquite. Uh, they are claiming that there is gunpowder. Um, I'm here to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that is false. And and I think they got to be real careful about that. Um, and the other thing is that they're they're claiming to use French oak barrels. Hmm. Now this, look at how dark this Añejo is. Even on the on the little neck tag right there. Oh yeah. There, go, French oak. Yep, there it is. Uh, this is a producer of San Juan del Rio. If you're familiar with some of those regions, if you're fans of, of the certain regions where mezcal is made, um, this one is uh, really, really dark and rich. It's got, mm -hmm. the, the, it's got that tobacco kind of look to it. Um, even though we nominated it uh, in the Reposado category for for Brand of Promise, I I I was I think I was just personally disappointed that I didn't get what the French oak that I was expecting to get. And that's just that's just my that's just wow. You keep breaking those those. I things. can't get the oh. There's like a safety seal on the corner. There's a piece of tape over it. Yeah, well, there you go. There we go. Ah, you can get that cork off. You, you did that the last time, too. It's like, holy cow, man. Did, yeah. Did... The other two, they snapped when I twisted them, and this one did not. Well, I'm going to use a Glen Cairn for, okay. for this pour, because how many months did did they say this was being uh, aged? Uh, two years is what they have. Two years. Yeah. Okay, now I'll buy that because of the of the deep, dark color that I'm that we see I mean this is there, there's a big light there's a big uh, 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 color difference between the reposado I don't know absolutely if that. and the añejo and the yeah. añejo see how dark that añejo is so uh, that being said I am uh, gonna swirl this around um, it's got some beautiful structure. It, it's got some great mouthfeel and, and body. Um, it, it, it clings to your palate like, like, like smoke will tend to do, but it's not cloying and it's not, um, uh, I don't detect any additives. I, I don't believe that they can have any if they're going to call themselves an artisanal right. mezcal. Uh, you know, they, they, they're not, the, the mezcals are not, uh, under the same, um, Normas, they haven't adopted all, all the normas that, that tequila has. Uh, in other words, it, it, unless you consider yourself or are considered an industrial mezcal, um, and there are very few of those that would even admit to that. True. You're using the Stasel Jarrito. I got the Stasel Jarrito, the uh, taller one. Oh, the tequila, yeah, the tequila yeah. one, yep. That's so pretty in that glass, too. It really man. is, yeah. The color's gorgeous. It's very visually attractive. Yeah. 
Even in tequila, we don't typically see something this dark that's been aged for two years. Yeah, exactly. Oh, wow. Oh, that's neat. That's neat. Okay, now, now I'm getting the extra layer of complexity that I've been mm -hmm. looking for. From, yeah. From wood. I'm getting, it's almost like a, like a, like a, like a fruit. Like there's, there's a severe dried fruit, like a dried hang. fruit. Yep. But it's, Absolutely. but it's not a cherry. It's not a raisin. It's not cranberries. It's more like a, like a date or a mango or no, a sweeter side, like maybe even a dried pineapple, maybe. Yeah. 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 It could be like that. Yeah. I mean, I'd say more mango though. I think you're more, right there. Yeah. No, I, I guess some. I get some vanilla too. I'm getting some some very good smoke. Mm-hmm. On the sides of the glass, I'm getting way more smoke than we have gotten in the in in the first two varietals. Uh, and I'm not sure what they what to attribute that to. Cause is it is it the espadine? Are we getting does the French oak bring out more mesquite? Right. I'm definitely getting more mesquite, I feel like, than the other two. Uh, I'm getting I'm getting cocoa. I'm getting hints of cocoa as well. <sighs> wow! And this is just on the nose, folks. Yeah. I, I'm just. Mm -hmm. th this is some real complex stuff. There's a lot going on here. Really? Yeah. All right. I'm ready. I'm ready to. Uh, yeah! Holy cow, there. man! Hmm. Oh. Wow, that is really different. Yeah, I get a lot of fruitiness mixed in. That's the first thing it hits me, and it's like, it's not citrusy, but it's kind of tangy. Yeah, it's a. Uh, here's here's something. Instead of a fresh fruit, it's more of a of a dried fruit, mm -hmm. like a dried mango or a dried. Um, uh, apricots. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a dried fruit, but it's not like dried cherries. It's not that because yeah, it's not... sweeter. Mm -hmm. You're right. It's tangy, almost. Holy, holy moly! This is. I'm getting way more smoke. I, I'm. I think now I'm beginning to to discern the, the the French where the French oak has finally mm -hmm. come in. It does taste like a completely different. Um, animal. Uh oh. <sighs> and Matt's screen is frozen. Not sure why there's a poor connection here. Uh, and we're back. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we were saying, Matt, that um, there is a richness in this mezcal in Cebusca that that was not prevalent and, and not there at the Reposado. Uh, there's there's dried like apricots or mango mm -hmm. and, and and the aroma really opened up in the time that I had taken to reboot my computer here on my end after my little hardware malfunction. Uh, I'm getting some neat stuff that I wasn't didn't pick up the first time around. Almost like I don't know if it, it's somewhere in the car, caramel to butterscotch spectrum, but more to the butterscotch side. I feel like. See, mine's more smoke prevalent. My, okay. Mine is more uh, the mesquite is coming through. Uh, I'm not sure if that's enhanced from the from the uh, the French oak. Uh, I have. I can honestly say I've never. I've never had a nose like this in an aged uh, mezcal. 
Mm -mm. This is a very unique nose. Absolutely. And not off-putting, it really is unique. You, you're going to have to decide for yourself whether you, you all like this kind of um, uh, unique nose and aroma. I yeah. gotta, I'm going to dive in one more time, though. I know you've had a couple yeah. more sips than I have. Okay, you're right. It's tangy on the back end. There is a tanginess back there. Mm-hmm. Um, there's also, you know what else, too? There's also a slight funkiness. Okay. Yeah, I can see that. Um, and um, I know we were talking at the beginning uh, uh, of, of the Cebusca um, uh, tastings that we've had about the gentleman, the scientist who, who, who uh, uh, is responsible for Monte Lobos Mezcal, mm -hmm. and I interviewed him, and he has a, a really a wonderful little book that explains everything about Mezcal. It's called The Anatomy of Mezcal. It's in English and Spanish. And um, uh, Monte Lobos, the Espadín Monte Lobos, has a much uh, a, a funkier flavor profile that could be off-putting to some people. Mm -hmm. This has that funkiness in it, but it's rounded off by, what did they say, two years in French oak? Two years in French oak is what they said, yeah. I don't have the website up anymore to have the rest of the details. But. Yeah, no, that's that's fine. Uh, this is extremely unique. Yeah, it really is. And for an 80 proof, this is 80 proof, right? I mean, they're, they, they didn't come in any higher than that, right? No, yeah, 80 proof. I'm, I'm really, really impressed. This is definitely by far mm -hmm. the star of the show, but it's different. It's, it's like Monte Lobos, but it's, it's, I think the funkiness isn't coming from the barrel. It's not like the barrel had any mold in it or anything like that. The, right. I think the funkiness is coming from the distillation that I didn't get in the Joven or the Reposado. This is really mm. different. Yeah. And it is uh, in, the, in the neck tag, it did say copper stills is what, copper pot stills is what they're using on this, uh, which makes sense since it is artisanal. They don't have a ton of options in that area. Uh, wow, man. This is, this is really something. I would even pair this with a cigar. That's how unique it is. Um, you know what else, too? I don't know if you'll agree with me or not, but, uh, but you, certainly you could use it for uh, uh, a Mezcal Old Fashioned or even a Mezcal Manhattan if you had to. Yeah, that would be really interesting to see how that played out. Wow. I am really digging this nose. Yeah. This is one of those, and it's, not only am I getting mango, there are hints of, 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 of orange, but it's more like the, just, just a hint at the, at the end of that, but it's like mm -hmm. an orange oil. And you pulled that out a long time ago. You and I were doing something, and, and you mentioned orange oil, not like a fresh orange. Yeah. And you know what? That's the thing now. They're using dehydrated fruit to, to you know, um, uh, to, to float or as a garnish. Mm hmm. Oh, my God. I'm pouring, yeah, I'm pouring a little bit more. You need it yeah. considering your computer crashed halfway through the, about eight minutes. Computer crashed. There's, there's 22 days left of tax season, Mike. Yeah, and then, uh, I know. <laughs> Oh, yeah. This is this is um, <coughs> this is really really a, an unusual, unique flavor profile. The aroma is I'm in love with this aroma. Mm -hmm. For an eighty proof to be this prominent, now I can believe that they're actually using a French oak barrel. I still don't believe yeah. they're using gunpowder. I, I don't care what anybody says. Yeah, that's, no, that's I pure. Was it the what did they what did we call it marketing? Tequila marketing, happy speak, something like that. Happy speak, yeah. <laughs> what do you say, uh, popsicle stick? I think so. Popsicle stick, right. 
in that Añejo category. Wow, that is an amazing. What a great, and the finish is, the finish is much more prominent on this one than it is on the first two. I don't know what they yeah. did. I don't know what they did, other than you know the, um, the eighty proof, you know, toning it down a little bit. But this Añejo, that that's, again, yeah. can't say enough about it. So anyway, folks, that's that's our take on Cebusca. This is a Stoli product. This is an um, an M. Um, uh, what do they call it? It's an anchor beverage, I think, is the the U.S. version of this. But it's Stoli. You know, it's uh, they're out of New York. Uh, again, thanks to uh, to Jack and the PR company for making that happen. They were really nice enough to to send us uh, the samples. Um, next time, maybe they'll get my name right. But anyway, I got my name. Right, yeah, so. they got your name. Okay, because because you are Matt. Uh, but that's our take on Cebusca. I think it's a very worthy look. Do we know? Do we have a price point on it? Just out of curiosity. Uh, I believe it was fifty six ninety nine on uh, Old Town. It's not bad. Not bad yeah. at all. I think for fifty six, it it pours and tastes uh, much much more expensive. Uh, yeah. I think in, in you know it. I like it. I, I if you're not a big fan of the funkiness, but if you like if you want to try something unusual, it's funky, and it's got the French oak. Uh, I think that's a very worthy find. It's a good Cebusca. <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyway, that's our take on Cebusca. I'm Mike Morales here in San Antonio. That gentleman over there is... Matt Metris in Rochester, New York. Matt's about ready to throw out his computer <laughs> out his window. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, but that is... Uh, we have been uh, dissecting and having a really great time with Cebusca Mescal. Um, I am here in San Antonio. He is in Rochester. And whatever you do, please subscribe to all of our, all of our platforms, wherever you listen to us uh, on your podcast. And if you're watching us on YouTube, that little glitch was no big deal. And, but just, you know, hit, hit that red button because whatever you're going to do, tomar sabiamente. Tip wisely.